time for novelist Anne Rice. The latest volume of her Vampire Chronicles just hit the bookstores. It's called The Tale of the Body Thief, and it's already number one on the bestseller list. Today's national correspondent, Jamie Gangel, recently called on Ann Rice at her home in the Garden District of New Orleans. Jamie's in Washington this morning. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Bryant. Anne Rice's name on a book jacket almost guarantees a bestseller. It's estimated her paperbacks sell at the rate of one every 24 seconds. But what most of her readers don't know is that Anne Rice is not her given name, nor is it the only name she writes under. No, no, my name was Howard Allen O'Brien. And uh, I changed my name to Anne because I didn't want to go through life being Howard. Where did your parents come up with Howard Allen O'Brien? They apparently looked at me, held me in their arms, and said, she's going to do great things. We're going to give her a man's name, and it's going to go through life like a trumpet blast before her. And I just hated it. To her the freedom to explore different styles. Anne Rampling writes erotic contemporary novels. And Anne Rocalar writes pornography. I believe pornography is a worthy genre, and I wrote the fantasies that I couldn't find in any store. All I could find was hack work. So I wrote what I considered to be really good pornography for those of us who enjoy that kind of fantasy. And they, they are very sadomasochistic, but they're very light, they're playful, they're like the theme park of S&M. And uh, <laughs> I probably won't write any more. I did what I set out to do. And it's funny, now they're very, very popular. For a long time, they were sort of underground works, and, and there wasn't uh, much talk about them. But now there's a lot, and they're doing very, very, very well. And one of the most delightful things to me is when women come up at the book signings, and they have their baby in a stroller, and they say, we love your dirty book. <laughs> <laughs> I think, good. Okay, and your readers, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. The publicity, though, has is a double-edged sword. You can't go out of your house anymore, can no, you? No, no, not anymore. How do you deal with that? Um, well, I feel like I have no right to complain. You know, my readers have been wonderful. Um, I love them. I feel I'm not an alienated artist. I love my audience, and I know my audience. And sometimes I feel that my audience, they're the only people that don't get sick of me. You know, I, I sort of overwhelm people around me with my constant enthusiasm and constant obsessions, but my audience puts up with it. Anne Rice is modest. At a recent book signing, 1,500 people lined up for hours to meet her. Sure, my pleasure. I just came through Georgetown on the way here, and I'm reading The Tales of the Body of the oh. I finished that part in Georgetown, and now I'm finishing the part in New Orleans here. But Next, you'll be on the Keeley Jew. Well, I better tell you where you're going. I'm sorry. And every year, her fan club throws a party for her hero, the vampire Lestat. Fans come from all over the country, each paying homage in their own special way. Lestat would love it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, Lestat is always there in several incarnations. I mean, we, we have people that come with cat's eye contact lenses. They come with uh, teeth bonded on by their dentist. And some of, the, some of the people are so good at impersonating Lestat that they actually give me chills. Let's talk about the vampire Lestat. The, he's 18th century Frenchman. Right. But in this book, He's very 90s. He's a computer hacker. Right. Oh, he definitely. has a VCR. Mm -hmm. um, his language mm -hmm. is very 90s. Why did you decide to make that leap? I wanted to see things from a fresh perspective. I wanted to show the impact of time on him. I, I think one of the things about horror literature and people who write about vampires and immortals is there's often a terrible failure of imagination. They aren't very interesting in most movies and books. And, and I think if somebody has lasted 200 years, that's going, to, that's going to be a very capable person. He's going to know how to use the best computer and how to access data banks, you know. And he's going to have a collection of the finest movies ever made and sit back on his velvet couch and he's going to watch those films. So it, I wanted to get into all of that. When did you start writing? I was a little child when I started, and I wrote a couple of novels in grammar school, and um, all of it really devoted myself to it um, completely when I was about 28, 29, about that time. I was still in college, but I knew I wanted to be a writer, and I was slowly subordinating everything else to that. You have an interesting mixture of followings. You have a large gay following. Yes, definitely. You have a large feminist following. Yes. And you have mm -hmm. a large theological 
following. Yes, that, that is surprising me a bit, that I have been so generously forgiven by my Episcopalian and Roman Catholic friends for some of the things I've written, that they actually ponder them and even teach them in classes. And I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm very happy. I was recently invited to a girls' Catholic school to speak to the senior class. And I said, are you sure you want me? I mean, do you really know what's in these books? And they said, oh, yes, yes. And our girls want to hear you talk. I read somewhere that the one thing and no longer. I oh, take that back. Okay. I'll tell you why. Um, I, this is what I decided. Um, I don't want to be just a pop writer, and I don't want to be just a literary writer. But I've come to realize that having an audience that includes everybody from your manicurist to bread kitchen professors or whatever is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And the people who, who come up to me on the street or talk to me or call sometimes to talk about the books, um, sometimes these are the only books they read. And I'm so honored and so flattered by that. I thought, what a thrilling thing. You're a popular writer, you know. Sexuality, their poetry. How great. So I don't mind anymore. I'm, ne I'm never going to say that again. I think that was, that was foolish. I hope I'm all things, you know. I want, I want to reach everybody. For the record, Bryant, she does not believe in vampires, but she does believe in ghosts. And Bryant, you'll be happy to hear she also likes Madonna's new book. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 never mind. Jamie, thank you. We're going to come on back in a moment. Have a good weekend. We're